So quickly, I'm working for Freelease, uh, an open source GIS company based in France. Uh, all our work is on GitHub. Um, so as I said, we are contributors in QGIS, uh, mainly on the server side. We do QGIS plugins, uh, yeah, QGIS core developments for desktop or servers, because yeah, we use these tools uh, on uh, our everyday. Um, we do also our own uh, open source project called Lismap uh, Web Client. It's to publish a QGIS project on the web, thanks to QGIS uh, desktop and QGIS server. So quickly, I guess most of you know what is QGIS. Uh, it's a great tool. It has uh, like a very nice uh, rendering engine to make complex uh, rendering like this one. It's showing uh, OSM vector data. Uh, you can do a lot of uh, isochrons analysis. Um, there is some advanced uh, features like the temporal controller uh, with uh, WMTS data. Uh, you can have a 3D viewer inside, so there are quite a lot of features. And on the other side, we have OpenStreetMap. Uh, it has its own uh, data model. So in OpenStreetMap, it's uh, node, way, and relation. And in GIS, it's point, line, and polygon. But it's different kind of objects. An OSM way can ever be a GIS line or a GIS polygon according to its OSM tags. And an OSM relation, it's quite a complex object in OpenStreetMap. It can be a very mixed geometry, like point, line, multi-line string, multi-geometry. It can be everything. Uh, another difference is the attributes. Uh, in OpenStreetMap, uh, sorry, in, in uh, GIS, we create a layer, then we define fields. And uh, all features within this layer has this kind of fields. But in OpenStreetMap, uh, the layer does not exist. Each features is individual, and we define its own keys and values for this OSM feature. So therefore, when we switch like from OSM to QGIS, there are just a few differences. Um, and we might wonder some questions, like uh, do we need to have up-to-date OSM data? Because the OpenStreetMap database is updated like every minute, so you have new contributions. Do you need a, a static export, or do you need to to follow all contributions in OpenStreetMap. Then, do you work with small or big extent? By the way, what is a small and big extent? Like some, it depends on the density of the area. Like uh, in Europe, uh, it's quite dense, and uh, in some part of the world, it's less dense. So it, uh, it makes change when you want to ask for a request on the API. Do you need to have uh, OSM metadata, like uh, the contributor, the timestamp, the, um, the change set, if you want like, to make some analysis about like, contributions uh, in a specific area? Uh, do you need data design for like, display, just map rendering, or analysis, or routing? Um, sometimes you might have just a subset of keys uh, in uh, GIS software. And, but you may have a lot of keys in OpenStreetMap, like uh, defining like some very precise uh, values. So do we need all the keys and values? So let's check uh, what we can do. So just with QGIS only, quickly, like in your QGIS browser, uh, you can already have uh, like uh, the OpenStreetMap uh, mapnik styles. Uh, just go in your browser and then XYZ tiles, then you can have OpenStreetMap. Um, then you can find some online websites uh, doing the transformation from uh, OpenStreetMap to uh, GIS format. The most famous one would be like download.geofabric.de. Uh, it's providing worldwide uh, files. For me in France, I use uh, like uh, this one. Uh, it's quite convenient because it's coming with the QG styles, uh, the screenshot on the right. It's coming with a QGIS project. It's not only in France, but there are also other countries. And uh, sometimes I should yeah, try this style in, on other OpenStreetMap files because it's just uh, nice to have a, uh, a style already pre-made. And there are like other, of course, data portals. Uh, in, look in your own country uh, for OpenStreetMap data sets. Uh, then with QGIS also we can open straight um, like PBF files or OpenStreetMap files. It's working, like you can load them. 
thanks for, for to OGA and GDAD in the background. Um, there's a different website to download these files. Again, uh, geofabric.de, and there are plenty of other files, uh, websites. But it starts to be an issue when, we, when you want to work with some specific keys in QGIS. Uh, if you open a raw OpenStreetMap file in QGIS, you, you will see this uh, field called uh, other tags. Uh, it's, um, it's combining all the keys uh, in a single field. As you can see, like a denonation, landmark, genus, life, uh, leaf, sickle. Um, so it's all in a single field. And it's not convenient sometimes to just uh, work on a single key of this field. So this is called an HTOR field. Uh, there is a support in some tools about HTOR. In QGIS, you can use uh, the processing toolbox and look for HTOR. You will find the explode, explode HTOR field. So you put your vector layer, you put your, your field in it, and then it will explode uh, all your keys and values in separate fields. This is what I'm using. Um, if you don't want to use the processing toolbox, you can use uh, uh, QGIS expressions. I guess all you know, uh, you know about this uh, dialog. Uh, so look again for HTOR. You will find HTOR to map. It will explode uh, all your keys and values. So here I'm using like HTOR to map other tags, then I want the description, and the output is uh, just uh, the value of the key description. Then there are a lot of plugins uh, in the QGIS plugin uh, repository. So let's have a look uh, to a few of them. Um, this one, I use it uh, a lot. Quick map services. Um, this, it's showing like open topo map in the background. It's based on OpenStreetMap. So just be sure that uh, you go in your quick map services, then go in settings, more services, and then you can click uh, get contributed pack. Because by default, quick map services is just providing just a few base layers. And uh, by going in these settings, it will add uh, way more uh, backgrounds uh, like shown in the, on the screenshot. Then uh, QuickOSM plugin, so it's to download data uh, on the fly. So it's in the background, it's doing uh, some request to uh, an HTTP API called the uh, Overpass API. Maybe you have used the uh, Overpass Turbo, it's a web interface for Overpass API. So QuickOSM is doing exactly the same, but in QGIS desktop. Um, so I am the, the developer of QuickOSM, and I've just released uh, two point, the last version like this weekend during the QGIS contributor meeting. So I really invite you to uh, upgrade because I fixed some annoying bugs, <laughs> I would say. Um, and uh, if QGIS uh, propose you to upgrade your plugins, just do it because uh, I know we are like uh, sometimes introducing new bugs, but we are also fixing quite a few bugs uh, in some release. So please upgrade. Um, so QuickOSM is targeting like a few kind of users, like it can be non-OSM contributors and also some uh, OSM overpass API experts who know how to write uh, queries. And it's doing some magic for you in the background, like removing the HTOR tags uh, automatically. But, but it's using an API, so you have a limited amount of data that you can download in the single request. So let's make an overview. Um, the quick query panel is the first one. Uh, to, you can search in your native language. Uh, for instance, in English, it's uh, bakery. Uh, in Italian, sorry, I don't speak Italian, but it's panetaria. Um, in French, it's uh, boulangerie. And in OSM, maybe you don't know, but it's shop equal bakery. Sometimes we forgot it could be, I don't know, another uh, key. So that's convenient because now you can write in your native language and uh, QuickOSM will just uh, find the correct uh, key and value. Um, we added multi-key support. Um, we'll show that. So, yeah, I'm French. I like uh, cheese and bread. So I'm looking for either a boulangerie. 
So I could write uh, boulangerie, so I have shop equal bakery. But I also want to find places where I can uh, buy cheese. So I could type shop, then equal cheese. So this in the background will generate for me the, the query where I can find either bread or cheese. Then I can write the city where I want to look for data. Uh, map presets. Um, for now, there is only one preset by default in the plugin. The idea is to download many layers, uh, many OSM objects with many like uh, different QG symbology by default in a single uh, click and click button. So urban, like as you can, you can see, there is roads and buildings uh, with a style with uh, some labels on the roads. So the idea is that like you just double click on urban and it will download for you. It will generate the queries uh, and uh, it will apply the QG symbology automatically. So we can also, uh, you can also create your own presets on your own computer. Uh, so you need to define a preset name, a description uh, for the preset. Then on the left, you can uh, define like your different layers that you want to query. So this one, it has buildings and roads. And then for each query, you can define the, the content of the query. Like this one is building with all values. You can define the extent or the area. And the last step, you can define some QG symbology to apply automatically when the download will be done. So as I said, for now, there is only a single preset. So it would be very nice if uh, we could have more presets. I'm thinking about like a bicycle map, land use. Uh, some people asked me uh, yesterday, oh, it would be very nice to have a natural uh, layer, a natural water layer, so the loadings automatically, like rivers, dams, and uh, a few things. So I finally took some time to write the documentation. Now you can contribute uh, to QuickOSM. So if you are doing the same kind of presets, like, uh, and you've, you, think that it would be nice to, to have it by default, yeah, you can contact me and I will add it to have, yeah, automatic maps, no knowledge for, like, uh, to write queries and uh, swimming with nice styles. Um, maybe also we can run uh, QuickOSM in uh, processing. Uh, it's uh, the toolbox available on the right, uh, right side of QGIS, and there is a QGIS modeler where you can, like, uh, make a complex algorithm by uh, adding a few algorithm in. So for instance, this one, yeah, it's downloading uh, fire hydrants in an area, reprojecting in meters because all data from OpenStreetMap come in uh, degrees. Uh, then doing a buffering and applying a QG style. So when I launch this uh, uh, QGIS model, it's only asking me for an extent, then all it done be, and then I have my final layer uh, with my uh, buffers and uh, fire hydrants. Uh, if you have a local OSM file, you can also open it, um, download it uh, with a website, or you can open a PDF or XML file, and you can do some filtering, uh, like shop equal bakery again. But it's not using the overpass API, so it, you can do more, like uh, you can have a more, a bigger amount of data. Uh, some quick tips. Um, every layer is made with QuickOSM. Now you have a button like reload the query in a new file because the OpenStreetMap database is updated uh, quite often. So you can right click and reload. It will uh, reload the query and then add a new layer in your QGIS. Uh, you can do uh, like, uh, you can search in many places at the same time like Montpellier and Paris. Uh, by separated by a semicolon. Um, QuickOSM will also parse all your fields um, in your layer, and it will add some default actions. Uh, if you don't know what is an action, you, it's uh, like a, a trigger that you can, um, like this one, it will like scan, like, oh, it found a website, or it found a URL, or Wikipedia uh, key, and then it, either opening like the website or uh, opening JOSM. Uh, this one, it's like uh, there is a mapillary picture attached to this uh, uh, OpenStreetMap node. And I could open like uh, the mapillary uh, website. 
So it's the same like if there is a Wikipedia or URL or a, it's just scanning and trying to find some default actions. Uh, translations, I put the link if you want to translate in your uh, own language. Um, but uh, the issue with QuickOSM is like uh, there is some issues with uh, complex OSM relations because, uh, as I said, it's not maybe compatible with uh, GIS format. So only relations equal root, uh, multi-line strings, multi-polygons, or boundaries are supported. Uh, if you have other uh, relations, then you need some post-processing to, like, to know what you really want about this relation and to build like, the geometry. Um, about geocoding, that's new in QG 3.20. Um, before it was a plugin, but now it's integrated by default. Uh, Thanks uh, with a new server like nominateam.qgist.org. So they included a new uh, batch nominateam geocoder. If you have a lot of address that you want the, the geometry, um, it will use in the background yeah, this server and ask like the, the point. And it's integrated as well in the locator bar at the bottom uh, of QGIS. You can uh, start typing an address, and uh, it will also ask the nominateam API uh, in the background. So before as well it was a plugin, but now it's integrated in QG score. Um, if you do some routing, there is some plugins that you can use. Uh, I'm using sometimes ROS tools. It's using also an online API. Um, you can choose between open root service or uh, GraphHopper. It's the same as uh, the, on the OpenStreetMap website, you can choose uh, the provider. So you can do different like isochrones or matrix calculations. Then talking about database. So if you go on the wiki page uh, on uh, OpenStreetMap, you will find a table like similar to this one. And then it's showing you all different schema or tools that you can use. And uh, you can see there is some green and red uh, box. So according to what you want to do, if you want your database to be updatable, or like if you want uh, all fields, like HTOR, we can find it again. Um, you might need to choose this tool or the other one. Just the main one which is used is called uh, OSM to PGSQL, mainly used for rendering. And it's very widely used. Um, I'm using ImpoSM when I need. Um, this one is also updatable. Um, I will show that just after. Um, with Docker, um, it's a nice project that, I mean, uh, like to quickly spin up a database um, using Docker. So there are a few containers inside this Docker project. Um, a PostgreSQL container, a container to make the update. Uh, so the idea behind um, a Docker Compose project is like it's hiding all the complexity uh, behind like uh, this command line tool. So the idea is like you drop a PBF file in the folder, you set the area that you want to keep uh, in your PostgreSQL database, there is just uh, one file for settings uh, provided, but I can let everything by default. And I do a make run. Then all the magic of Docker is like uh, everything is already set up behind. So it's providing me um, uh, a schema with all tables and layers. Uh, there is a mapping file by default, like uh, OSM admin, OSM IROs, amenities. So it's possible to, to change the mapping. Um, there is some, a lot of settings. So by default, in the Docker project, it's set up to automatically update your PostGIS database every two minutes. Uh, this is, you can change it, of course. Two minutes, it's uh, very, very quick. Um, then there are some advanced things, like SQL triggers and views that you can set up when the the project is starting, and also some styles. 
Um, vector tiles, uh, that's new, again, like since the view versions in QGIS, 3.14. Uh, 3 uh, there is map tiler and open map tiles. Um, there is a conference uh, at the Force 4G, I think it's this afternoon, if I'm correct. Uh, there is also one like from the state of the map last weekend. But uh, yeah, if you have some, uh, I, I won't be able to present vector tiles. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a full presentation about uh, their tools. So yeah, that was just a subset of tools that I'm using uh, with OSM in QGIS. Um, maybe I missed some uh, links or some tools that you might uh, use. So yeah, if I forgot some, just tell me. Uh, <laughs> I would have a look.